What's up guys, I'm Mike from Stocked Up and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. In this episode, we're going to go over all the important news from over the weekend and all the top stocks that we're watching for this week. There are a lot of stocks setting up pretty nice right now, so make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video. And also at the end of the video, we have a $1 million put option. And if you guys aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Tom and I post brand new videos every single day. But with that being said, Tom, what happened over the weekend? Yeah, there's actually some big news going around with Alibaba, or ticker symbol B-A-B-A. -A. And Alibaba has been in free fall over the past few weeks as they are down around 30% from their highs around $320. And they have moved down so much because of a couple of reasons. Number one, Ant Group IPO was rejected by the Shanghai market, which was a pretty big deal. And that's what initially sent Baba down over um, over at the beginning of, the, of November, let's say. And then the reason number two is because China said that Baba is a monopoly and may have them change how their company operates. And over the weekend, Reuters and Bloomberg both reported today that officials from the Pe the People's Bank of China, which is the country's central bank, met with executives from Ant Group over the weekend and, in and instructed them to rectify how the company does business. So that's going to be a pretty big deal, I think, for Alibaba and just the whole Baba um, ticker and, and, and Ant Group and their whole entire system. Obviously, you can see they're down 30% from highs. And we've been getting tons of questions like, guys, should we be buying into Baba right now and start? to average in while they're down this far and while i do think that's a good idea to start averaging in here I, I i will say that with this bad news it just it just keeps coming out with more and more stuff about them having a monopoly and them having to change their business and stuff so i would really look for them to possibly keep falling a little bit more but i wouldn't say it's the worst spot to get in especially for what they do being an online retailer but just keep in mind that china's really going after alibaba for some reason right now and it's a pretty big deal for the company and it could they could obviously keep going down a lot further, but they are kind of bouncing off of a long-term support uh, at around 215. So we'll just have to see what happens. For sure. And yeah, they're down about 30% in the past month or so, which is a huge fall. And they do have some pretty bad news coming out. So um, if I feel like, you know, if we can, if we continue to see it uh, sell off, I feel like we could get a pretty good deal on this stock, but you know, we'll just have to play it by ear and we'll have to see what uh, kind of catalyst comes out. And then Tom, I heard there was a cybersecurity attack with SWI over the weekend. What happened with that? Yeah, this was actually a really hyped up stock over the past few years. This is solar winds, and they obviously deal with with solar and wind power and stuff like that. And Reuters reported that solar winds was subject to a massive cybersecurity attack that spread to the company's clients. Foreign hackers, who some of the top U.S. officials believe are from Russia, were able to use the hack to spy on private companies like the elite cybersecurity firm FireEye and the upper echelons of the U.S. government, including the Department of Homeland Security and the Treasury Department. So that's a pretty big deal if whoever hacked this was able to spy on the Treasury Department and the Department of Homeland Security, including a ton of these big cybersecurity firms. And you can really see how much SWI stock has fallen down from this news with the hack. And it looks like that they might even continue to fall even lower. And they're almost in a similar position as of Alibaba with how they're, they're, they've had a huge drop over the past few weeks. And they might be a decent spot to start averaging into some shares here on SWI. But man, this hack seems pretty bad. And it's something that doesn't really happen too often, especially whenever it happens to the, the Department of Homeland Security and the Treasury. For sure. And, you know, we hear in the news more and more hacks are coming out. Like, I believe there's also a pretty big hack um, the other week or maybe two weeks ago. And really what this is like helping are these cybersecurity companies, because um, obviously uh, cybersecurity is a huge um, it's a huge industry. And um, the more uh, the world gets involved in technology, uh, the more important cybersecurity becomes. So uh, really look at cybersecurity stocks like CrowdStrike or Zscaler or, you know, there's a ton of them out there, you know, do your own research. But th there's a reason why these cybersecurity stocks are just exploding and, you know, th it actually has some value behind it. So uh, overall, you know, it's a bad catalyst to hear for SWI, but there is opportunity um, in this catalyst. So uh, was there any other major news over the weekend? You know, it was actually pretty dry with news. The only news is that we're still waiting for a stimulus bill to get passed if it does get passed. But there was some unemployment benefits that ran out, but those are expected to be fixed 
once that bill gets passed. And the thing is, is that Congress could shut down if they don't pass a bill by the end of Tuesday. So that's really their deadline. And I think that they might get one passed by then, but we'll just have to see how that plays out um, tomorrow on Monday. We've been waiting for a bill for forever. So hopefully they finally get it passed. It'd be awesome if they can get it passed by the end of the year. I mean, who knows if that's going to happen because, you know, we finally thought we were going to have a bill last week and then Trump said, no, we want $2,000 instead of 600. And then we're just going back and forth and back and forth again. So I just really hope we can get a bill sooner rather than later. So uh, just for the audience's clarification. So Tom, there was a bill last week and that was the defense bill that got vetoed. And then there's another bill, which is a COVID stimulus bill that is still in progress, right? Yeah, and then that stimulus bill is also tied into the government funding bill. So at the same time, that's technically like two bills and into one bill. So if they pass the funding bill, then they'll pretty much pass, you know, the the stimulus package. And then if they pass the package, they'll pretty much pass the funding bill. So if they if they don't get a stimulus package done, then Congress will also shut down, which is a pretty big deal. Gotcha. Okay, good to know. So let's get right into our Discord member of the day. Today's member of the day is Christian, and he made a post in the Discord on Friday, yeah, on uh, on Thursday, saying, "Mike, good call out on the crowd weekly credit spread yesterday morning. I went a little bit more aggressive at the 2:30, 2:35 strike, but it looks like it worked out. Appreciate you guys. I've never done a next day expiration besides spy. You have a great group here. Keep it up. Well, thank you so much for all of that, Christian." And if we look at his picture, we could see he made around $4,100, which is the max profit. So awesome job. And let's get right into the momentum plays. And so yeah, thank you again, Christian, for all the kind words. Um, but with the first momentum play, we have Zoom, which is ZM to the downside. Yeah, watch for Zoom to fall below 375. And this stock has been killing it this year. But just keep in mind that as whenever things go up, they have to come back down. So make them fall below 375. Yep, it's finally pulling back. But with the next one, we have Square. Square. Make them go ahead and fall below 220, uh, 225.90. All right, and then we have Twitter. TWTR. Make them also fall down below 53.80. Sounds good. So we're eyeing all these stocks potentially to break to the downside. If they do break below the levels Tom listed, we are eyeing them for a quick day trade. So uh, let's get right into the $1.1 million put option for this week. We are looking at the Zoom 350 puts that expire this Thursday. So we have another short week in the market. Um, it is New Year's this week. So uh, the market is only open on Thursday. It is closed on Friday. So for the option that expires on Thursday, like I said, the Zoom 350 puts. Um, what I like about this setup is it looks like it's at support. And if it falls below this level, I would say the 375 area, maybe maybe 370. Uh, if it breaks below that, I have a, I, it looks like it can fall a lot more. Uh, it looks like it bounced off this support level a couple times. So yeah, if it does break below that, it looks like it has a lot of potential. The only thing I don't like is that it is this option is $25 out of the money and there's only four days of time in the option. So that makes me a little bit nervous, but overall, I will definitely be eyeing Zoom for this week. What do you think about Zoom? Yeah, I actually really like it to the downside. It's moving off of all of my technicals exactly what I would exactly the way I'd love to see it to the downside. It went, it finally fell below this long-term trend a couple months ago and just started falling from there. And then right now it's actually riding the 100 SMA and it's just now starting to fall below it. So that's awesome to see that it was playing off of that the few times that it did. And I really man, this stock just really looks like it's going to start falling down right now. Similarly to how like NIO almost looks like to me like it's going to start falling down right now as well. What it's just I think a lot of these stocks that have been going up this year, I think that they're finally going to start pulling back here over the next few months. And I think that Zoom and like stocks like NIO and stuff like that are going to be some of the first ones that, that you'll see this pullback on. And I just, I love this play to the downside. I would definitely think that they're longing these just given what I'm looking at, but I don't know what their, what their uh, total position was or anything. Did you see NKLA recently? That thing is getting killed. Look at the Yeah, they're, they're still going down. I can't believe they're... St I thought maybe they would start to pop back up whenever they were going up right here, but man, they're still getting killed. Wow. Yeah. 
All right, well, for our first comment, we have Joe saying, can I just say SPCE for life? Tom, what's going on with your stock? Yeah, it's not doing too well as of late. They they were they had a lot of hype going up into that test flight that, that actually failed. Then they popped back down. It wouldn't be the worst spot to start averaging in, but I definitely wouldn't start going into into this stock too heavily right now. If anything, I would just average like a quarter of my position into it right here. They could easily keep falling down, especially if another test flight goes bad, but I do like the support that they bounced off of. And for the long term, it's not a terrible stock. But uh, just keep in mind that this is just simply space tourism. So a lot of this stock is movement off of news and off of hype, just like NIO and a lot of those other stocks. So just keep in mind, like it's not like a space mining stock or anything like that. It's just simply a tourist stock and it's going to cost a lot of money to actually go up in and do this flight. So it's not something that your average person can just go, go up to the SPCE headquarters and go take a flight. You know, it's going to cost a couple hundred thousand dollars, I believe, to actually get on these flights. And it's going to be a pretty big deal when you can do that. But just keep in mind, I don't think it's like the best stock in the world to hold for the long term. But I do think it's a good spot to possibly average in on to get in on some hype whenever that test flight does good. And then they actually start having regular flights. Gotcha. With the next question, we have Leon saying, thanks guys, great info as always. Can you go over what happened to Intel? It looks like it recovered pretty fast. So Tom, what's going on? Intel had a pretty, uh, pretty bumpy, um, I don't know, a lot of crazy movement in the past couple months. Yeah, for sure. I mean, they've had a lot of movement. They lost a few contracts. The first big drop here was actually right after they lost their Apple contract. And then this drop here was just on some bad earnings a few weeks ago. But then they also lost a contract with Microsoft whenever we saw this really bad red day over here. So it's really hard to trade Intel right now. I will say, I think that they are still good for the long term. You know, they're, they're a technology company that makes processors, and I don't think that they're going to go anywhere. And if anything, I would think that they would try to innovate to try to stay on par with like AMD and those types of companies that are doing well with their processors. So I would think that, you know, they're, they're pretty close to AMD right now on their processors. But right now, AMD is really taking the spotlight. And I think the Intel has to has to work a little bit to try to innovate to get back up there. But I do think it's a good spot to buy in here to start averaging in for the long term. They're really low right now, around $47. That's pretty low. Um, they haven't been this low in a few years, really. You can see that's a pretty good support over the past few years. Anywhere between 43 to 45 would be a pretty good buying point on Intel. But just keep in mind, they, they have lost those contracts. So they, they could have some some more short-term um, downside potential here. And I'm going to really be averaging in and just watching this stock. And just like Mike always says, just keep dollar cost averaging, averaging more and more and more as it keeps going down so I can make my price uh, obviously be better. And just keep in mind, don't go all in at once because they are they have been going down and there's been a lot of negative movement. So just be very careful with it. You know, it's a, it's a tricky situation. So good question. Yeah, and then I, I like to average in with shares, you know, equity, like for example, let's say you're looking at Intel or Apple or Tesla or the S&P 500, the lower it goes, if you like it for the long term, um, the better it is for you, you know, the more you could buy at a lower price, the better it is. With options, though, it's a little different. I'm not a huge fan of averaging into options because they decay, like because of time decay. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, but yeah, overall, I like I like everything you just shared, Tom. Um, with the next question, we have no saying PFE looks like a great opportunity. Wait for confirmation and load up. They sell many, many other types of drugs and have a low PE and lots of cash. I can only see them going up. So PFE is one of those crazy vaccine stocks. I like them for the long term, but just know they, they're going to have a ton of volatility with this vaccine news. And you just have to um, understand that if you do want to get into this stock. Tom, what do you think about PFE from a technical standpoint? Yeah, from a technical standpoint, I think that they're doing pretty good this year. I really like how they've been steadily like rising up, you know, ever since those lows of March. Then just keep in mind that whenever they were down at these lows, a lot of stocks were down at their lows as well. So it don't really blame PFE for that. But I think that they did pretty good for their uh, with the vaccine and everything it's coming out. Just keep in mind, though, like you said, Mike, there, there's a lot of questions with the vaccine. I like it how they're bouncing off of the support around thirty six dollars. That poses a pretty good level in the past. So hopefully they can start to rise off of this level. 
but you know, in the, in the short term, I would think that they might keep going down. I, you know, I can't tell you why they went down so much here whenever the vaccine's coming out, but Hey, it's 2020, right? I mean, <laughs> what else can I expect? But at the same time, they're hitting support around 36. So just watch out for that. I would say that's my main technical uh, analysis on this is that they're above the SMAs and they're bouncing off support. So maybe they could start to rise from here, but at the same time, I can't, I can't make a clear decision just because I can't believe how much they've fallen over the past week. Yeah, for sure. So with that being said, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for this week? You know, I'm still watching AMD. You know, a lot of people have been watching this over the past few weeks. I think I saw a lot of, on, on Thursday, I saw a lot of put buying, I think, on AMD. And I really like this possibly to the downside. It's It possibly is going to get rejected off this $100 level. So just watch for that key $100 level to be a, a pretty good resistance here. And it looks like AMD might start to fall. But if they don't, and then they go up and they break the $100 level, good. You know, we can just day trade calls on AMD. But in the short term, I'm going to be looking at puts, especially with how many red days they had last week. Good stuff. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for all the comments, the likes, and new subscribers. Uh, we post brand new videos every single day. So if you aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. And thank you guys again so much for all the comments. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Father, other than that, thanks for watching.